performed earlier in this round. That was a gorgeous inward three and a half somersault. I don't know that I've seen him do it a lot better than that. And he had trouble with this dive a couple years ago. He landed right on his back and he was afraid of it for a long time. And here was the slow motion of it. You see that nice quick throw right before he leaves the tower. And that is very important to do that many number of rotations before you hit the water off 10 meters. Here were the scores he got for that, a 91-20, and that put him in first place at that moment until Mark Lee. Rourke of Canada in fifth place. Here now is Lee Kong Yang. Chang. Lee Kong Ching is going to do a reverse three and a half somersaults. Boy, is this a lot of dive. 3.4 degree of difficulty. Mm. He could score a lot of points with this one. He sure could, and he's been training hard to be able to be successful here six hours a day sometimes. That is almost impossible for the body to hold up to on the 10 meter platform because of the impact of hitting the water going in excess of 30 miles per hour. Uh, no problem. No problem no. at all. <laughs> and these Chinese divers seem to get better with each dive. Yes, they do. Great jump off the tower. I'd like to see him straighten his arms out when he left the tower. I think he might go up a little bit higher. But that is such a difficult dive that the judges reward it. Oh, very nice points. And at 89.76, now Bruce Kimball. Bruce down in fourth place. 12 points out of third. 28 points out of first place. He's going to do an arm stand too. He's going to do that arm stand cut through reverse one and a half. Takes a lot of power through the shoulders. It's a gymnastic move where you kip and pull your legs through. You have to make sure your feet don't touch the tower when they come through, though. Yeah. Well, he comes back strong after missing his three and a half pipe just a little bit. He's a real fighter, though. There's his dad. Eight, eight, Another half. look. We see Bruce pull his legs through very quickly. Kicks out. The greatest thing about this dive is that he goes in the water without a splash. There are the scores for Bruce Kimball. 1-9, 1-8. They throw it out, and it's 65-52 in the standings now. After seven dives of the ten preliminaries. We are now in the eighth round, and Greg Luganis has already dived, and with this dive has taken first place. Look at it. What was wrong with that dive jack? And I think that the judges are holding back a little bit in the prelims. They're not willing to give tens because they don't know what's to come tomorrow. They may be forced to give elevens tomorrow if they give tens <laughs> today. And look at it again. Beautiful. Yes, it is. It's effortless. Talking with Ron O'Brien, the Olympic coach and he got 82.80 for that that put him in first place at the time here comes a man that can surpass him Lee Kong Zheng we're back he needs eight to surpass Luganus and go into first place well it wouldn't surprise me if he was able to generate eights on this it's an inward three and a half somersault it's a little bit higher degree of difficulty than the dive that Greg did and I have seen him do this very well in the past He is so strong, and he gets that somersault right from the platform so fast. And I think he's spinning so fast that he isn't able to control the come out. You see, he does almost two somersaults before he passes the 10-meter tower. I've never seen anybody spin that fast before. Yeah, way over on it. We said he needed eights, and he's got that. So this should mean Luganus would take over first place. Now, Bruce Kimball of the United States. Bruce Kimball. He needs tens. <laughs> To move into third place. Well, I certainly won't put it past him. If he gets tens, he will move into first place. It's a back one and a half somersault with three and a half twists. This is Bruce's highest degree of difficulty dive. He practices this on the trampoline all the time. Well, it's close 
to a 10, isn't it? Yes, it is very close. He demonstrated total control, and that is a difficult dodge to make. And to be that tight and that clean on the entry is spectacular. Oh, that was super. Here we go. Bruce gets his arms up right away and gets into the twist early. That's important when you're doing three and a half twists. You have to complete those twists and look right at the water in order to tighten down and not go in making very much splash at all. John Young card. An arm stand cut there are his scores, 83-52, and that will keep him in fourth place. So after eight dives out of ten in the preliminaries, Luke Gaines in first place, Lee of China second, Tong of China third, Kimball in the United States in fourth, and Kill out of West Germany in fifth. Gaines of the United States ahead of Lee and Tong of China, Kimball of the United States in fourth, and Kill out of West Germany in fifth place. Now Greg Luganis dived earlier in this round, and let's show you what he did. A beautiful reverse three and a half somersault. That's the toughest dive there is to do, and he makes it look so easy. That's why Greg Luganis is chairman of the boards. He certainly is. Another look at it. Jumps up and completes one and a half somersaults before he passes the platform. That is such gymnastic ability. I can't tell you how great tumbling comes into play on that dive. And a beautiful entry. There was a score, 91-80. That kept him in first place and gave this man, Lee Kong Jen, a tremendous mark to shoot at. Lee was second behind Greg, but with that great dive you just saw of Luganis. In fact, he can't reach first place. That's how good Greg's performance has been. Yes, I think Greg's been diving with a special intensity today. He wants to prove to the world that he is the undisputable best. Reverse one and a half, three and a half twist. Big splash on the end of that one. He hasn't dived as well as I've seen him dive in the past. He usually goes in the water perfectly straight without a splash, especially on these optional dives. But you see him take off there. His knees bend and his legs come apart. Over rotates a little bit on the end, and you see the splash come up. That's very unlike Lee Kong Ching. All right, Bruce Kimball, and we're told he's going to need nine and a half to make it into second place. Back or two eight. and a half. Pike, okay. he can get it. He can get the nines. Nine and a halves, rather. But I don't think he will. He went over just a little bit on that entry. And the judges have been rather... Rather stressed, haven't they? Rather conservative. Yes, they have. They've, they've been a little tight today. Sometimes they don't loosen up till the finals. You see, he's just got a little break in the knees there. It, it really is a beautiful <laughs> dive, but not good enough to get him nines and nine and a half. There they are. 67.86 for Bruce Kimball. And that will keep him in fourth place, but safely in the top 12 to get into the finals tomorrow. And here are the top 12 that will be here in the finals tomorrow. Luganis of the United States, Lee of China, Tong of China, Kimball of the United States. They're the first four. Then comes Kilat of West Germany, snowed of Great Britain. Pool. Here are the standings at the halfway mark. Five dives out of the ten to be done. Luganis of the United States and Kimball in a close battle as Bruce keeps the pressure on Greg. And the two Chinese divers in third and fourth. Here is Bruce. Bruce is doing a three and a half somersaults pike. And he has had knee problems as a result of that injury from the car accident. Oof. Doesn't have any problem with that dive whatsoever. That worked out great for him. Very strong, Bruce Kimball. I think he's been working very hard on strengthening his legs. Right there, we see a nice jump off the tower. He used not to be able to jump quite that high because of those knee problems. Again, he goes in the water almost splashless, and that's what is so impressive about Bruce Kimball. Eight and a half, eight, 73.80 for Bruce Kimball. Now, Lee Kong Ching is doing a back three and one half somersaults, standing backwards and spinning three and a half times before he hits the water. 3.4 degree of difficulty. His feet are just barely on the tower there. You can imagine trying to push from that position. Stretching back on their entries today. 
This is definitely some of the greatest diving I have ever seen in my life. My Such goodness. gymnastic oh. ability. The revolutions per minute that he is generating are incredible. Okay, nine, eight and a half, 88, 11. The game is on. Greg Luganis now in first, but behind him, those second, third, and fourth divers are really putting it on. Greg will need seven and a halfs and eights on this dive to remain in first place. Now, it's important for him to come off the tower straight and not be cockeyed at all. He's got to get both arms through right away. He was just a little bit sideways coming off. Passed into one side. It's very difficult to see when you're in profile with the platform, but that is an item that the judges are going to have to deal with. Here we go in the super slow motion. We come off the tower, and he turns a little bit too much over his right shoulder. He does a great job with that hard dive, but just a little bit too much over that right shoulder. Let's see if we can see. See him go sideways there. His feet go off to one side and his shoulders go the other direction. It's very difficult to square out on the bottom of that dive. And his scores, nines and eights, 82-17, enough to keep him in first place sufficiently. There's been a change in second place after this row of dives as Lee of China moves ahead of Kimball of the United States. Tong of China in fourth. Well, we've got quite a duel going on here. Bruce Kimball fighting it out with the two Chinese and Greg Luganis. Cynthia Potter's here, and I guess you've seen more than I have, Cynthia. How does this compare to other Olympic competitions? Jack, I've never seen a platform contest like this in my life. These guys are all putting the pressure on one another in every optional dive. They keep getting better. Here's the arm stand now, and he's over to the right-hand side of the platform. Well, he might be over there doing his arm stand because of the positioning of the spray that comes out underneath the tower. He wants to be able to see the water, and he may be able to see that spray right down there by the water coming out better over on that side. Well, maybe he's a right-hander. He sure hit it good, didn't he? <laughs> huh? He hit it great. You know, these difficult dives look so easy, easy when these guys perform them, but they are not. They work for months on the lower towers leading up to do these dives. I think he's happy about that one. He had a little arch in his back going in the water, but that was a great dive. There's the spray Cynthia was talking about. It ripples the surface of the water. Now, Lee Kong Ching is doing the most difficult dive that we're going to see on the platform today, a reverse three-and-a-half somersault. I would think that if he can get by this dive, he may be able to hold up to the pressure of this competition. He hasn't been able to do it in the past, but he's looking good today. He went by the dive. Went over too far. This has a 3.4 degree of difficulty to it. All right, let's take a good look at it here. Let's see if we can tell why he goes by. He bends his arms a little bit on the takeoff. He should straighten them out, straighten the, sh the elbows out as he reaches. Oh, he bends his arms coming out. If he would straighten his arms out, he would lengthen that radius more and be able to stop. And a couple of the judges spotted it. Six fives there. He gets 70 38. And now to Greg Luganis. Greg Luganis, who has been the senator of all eyes here. All right. Greg is doing an inward three and a half somersault. We see again the heels just off the platform, spinning inwards, meaning cut away three and a half times. Oh! I, he did it great right yesterday, but I think he did it even better today. Oh. I, didn't, I didn't know how he could do it better today. This place is alive. They love this performance. I think he likes it too. Look at that great laugh. And there are the scores. A ten, nine and a half. That's one of the dives that has scared him in the past. Here we see the replay. He initiates that somersault way above the platform, just what he needs to do in order to make the rotations. He kicks out of the dive and stretches through the water like it was an easy dive. Well, you know what he says. People ask me if it feels like flying. He said, no, I'm falling and I'm scared. But boy, has he managed to conquer that fear, huh? Now, let's take a look at the standings. After seven rounds of eight, Luganis increases his lead now, 26.73 from Lee of China, 
Tong of China as Kimball drops to fourth place and Doerr is in fifth. The seven animal of the United States in fourth and he really has his work cut out but he is very consistent and I wouldn't be surprised Cynthia as you were saying that if he just doesn't perform the best eyes of his life from here on in. He just may. He has a back one and a half somersault with three and a half twist here. This is his highest degree of difficulty dive. So he really wants to hit this one. Did he ever? Yeah, he hit it very, very well. There's his dad, Dick Kimball, the Olympic coach, and his father and his own coach. You see the great support Bruce has here. And on this replay, we see he takes off and gets into that twist right away. To make three and a half twists, you have to start it right off the platform. No doubt about it. Yesterday, the judges did not reward this dive as much as they could have. Let's see how they respond to it today. As we all wait for it. The scores are usually immediate. The scoring is... Uh not as complicated as it sounds. Seven judges, they throw out the high and the low, multiply that total by six-tenths of a point, and then multiply that total by the degree of difficulty of the dive for the final total. That's why the degree of difficulty is very, very important. And Luganus and Lee have the highest amount of difficulties in this competition, and Bruce Kimball does not. No, he doesn't, and he has to work extremely hard in order to make up for that lack of degree of difficulty. Well, it was a good wait. Well worth the wait for Bruce Kimball. Look at that. 9 5, 80, 9, 28. See if we see even a little smile out of Bruce. He doesn't express a lot of emotion. Yeah, he's happy about that. <laughs> and now this countryman, Lee Kong Jing. Li Kong Ching is going to do an inward three and one half somersault. This is the dive that he had trouble on yesterday. He wasn't able to control the entry and he went over on his back. He didn't go over today. Well, he hit it much better today, didn't he? He made sure that he piped out early enough that he could see where he was going. The takeoff is great, and he spins as fast as anybody in this contest spins. Kicks out. That's the pike out right there. He straightens out in a pike before he goes in the water, and that helps him to control the entry. All right, nine, eight and a half, 83.52. And you are seeing some of the best Olympic diving in history as Greg Luganis, the man they're all pushing. First after seven dives. And he has been incredible. Yes, and he said he was well trained. And I would say he was oh, wow. perfectly trained. I don't know how he could do this dive any better. You are watching perfection, ladies and gentlemen. He could be the greatest diver ever to dive. And he has shown it time after time. Oh, Ronald yeah. Bryan is coach. Okay. I don't know what a coach says after a dive like that. He just takes credit. No, it was right on. Looking very soft, apprehensively somewhat to the scoreboard. And again, we're having a delay, which is... Ah, nines, nine fives. All right, 81.90. As Greg Luganis continues his inexorable march to the gold. Greg's three and a 25.11 lead. Greg's three and a half somersault pike is an absolutely magnificent dive because of the artistic interpretation here. He makes it look so easy and it's so flourish. No splash, that's what he wants. Mr. Magic, Greg Luganis. It's very much in this that competition. This has been a dive that Bruce has gotten tens on in the past, Jack. We're going to watch him use the visual clues, and he's looking at the water. He's going to look at it twice more before he goes in. Oh, they love him here, Cynthia. Listen to that crowd. That was a great dive. All right. This is the replay, and we see him look at the water, taking off. He looks at it again there. 
He looks at it again before he kicks out and looks back. That's called spotting, and he is great at spotting. There's a degree of difficulty is 3.3. And if you have just joined us, you are looking at a very special athlete. The best diver in the world. The best diver in the history of diving. Back three and a half somersaults. That is why he is Mr. Magic, perfection. Greg gets a standing ovation for his dive. They're up all over this diving grandstand now. He gets a hug from Ron O'Brien, his coach. Nine and a half, nine and a half. Oh, my, what a dive for Greg Luganis in these Olympics. Here's a look in super slow motion. It's almost impossible for me to analyze this dive because it is so perfect. But I'm going to tell you that as he comes out of the dive and stretches back to the water, he doesn't have his hands together as he goes in. They're a little bit apart, and the splash goes up. Looks like he's about to make history. Nobody has ever broken 700 points in platform diving, and he is in a position to do so. Here are the standings and door. Kimball still has a chance for the silver as we're in the ninth round of ten dives. Bruce is doing a back two and one half somersault pike. He is at a deficit here with his degree of difficulty as compared to the Chinese diver Lee Kong Ching. And he knows it. What a dive Bruce Kimball hit. Yes, sir, Bruce. Bruce is so astute at knowing where he is in the air. He's been practicing these things since he was three years old on the trampoline. He is a master at sucking that water down with him. Oh, and the emotion here really exploding. Look at his teammates back there, all the other competitors. Nine Olympics. He needs 81.92 to break 700 points. Nobody's ever done that. That is the Mount Everest of this sport. Although he probably will be able to win this competition going away, the pressure is still on him. This is the toughest dive that he can perform on the 10 meter. A reverse three and a half somersaults. arguments on who the greatest athlete at these Olympic Games are, but here is certainly one of them. One of the greats of all time. A magnificent athlete, spread-eagling his sport as nobody else has. Taking the bow. All right, let's take another look at slow motion at that last and great dive. A reverse three and a half somersaults in tuck position. And there it is. The steel feather. Greg Luganis with strength and beauty and grace and perfection. Gold. Bruce Kimball in a tremendous comeback gets the silver and Lee of China will get the bronze. Presentation ceremonies for the 10-meter platform diving competition. Greg Luganis, of course, has already been presented with the gold and Bruce Kimball with the silver. And now Lee Kong Zheng of China will get the bronze. Winner of the bronze, China. 
and as most of these ceremonies have been, a little tear of falling on the platform. Greg Luganis becomes the first man since 1928 to win the gold medal in platform and in the springboard. Congratulations now for all around. And now, the national anthem of the United States. A cheerful, joyous, happy Greg Luganis, who has made Olympic history here at the diving pool at USC. All right, that's it. The diving competition has been concluded. We will have live coverage of the equestrian events, show jumping, when we return in just a moment. A tremendous comeback gets the silver, and Lee of China will get the bronze. Cynthia Potter is with Greg and Bruce now. Cynthia? Congratulations, Greg and Bruce. You rewrote the record books today. Did you know what was going on up there on your last dive? I kind of had a feeling, and I tried to block everything out, because if I thought about it too much, I would have been too nervous to even jump. So you were nervous? <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> I, was, I was nervous at the beginning, and I, I started to have fun throughout the contest and just kept dancing and... <laughs> what about being the first guy to win both the springboard and the platform since 1928 when Des Ardens did it? It feels great. It feels wonderful. I, you know, I had my doubts and, and all, but you know, I feel like I, I was at home, I was doing my homework, and I felt prepared. You told us you were well trained. Is that the way it felt today? Definitely. Thanks to Ron O'Brien and everybody at Mission Viejo, they, you know, who helped me, push me along, and Bruce always. He's always behind me pushing me and and we're good for each other I believe that Bruce congratulations tell us about this teamwork today well um, I think together we had a good diving order because I was first and I was able to put a little bit of pressure on the Chinese and uh, Greg brought up the rear and did some amazing diving today well you certainly didn't let up today what do you think was the key to your performance well I just concentrated on what I was doing I thought uh, you know being ahead of the Chinese in the order I couldn't really worry about what they were doing so I thought just put 10 good dives together and see what happens. Well, you certainly put the pressure on them together. Um, we kind of like to know what your plans are from here. Are you going to the Outdoor National? Definitely. I, I said that I'm going to go, and I'm going. So I'll be there in a week and a half. <laughs> good deal. What about you, Bruce? I sure will. I'll be there along with them. So we're going to see another basic duel at the Outdoor Nationals between Greg Luganis, the greatest diver of all time, and Bruce